Good afternoon, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for the second video blog of the day for October 9th, 2014, Thursday afternoon around 4.20 in Bellica, Massachusetts. Nice and sunny, highs in the 60s. Get out and enjoy this fall weather because it's going to be a little bit damp tomorrow tomorrow night and first thing Saturday morning. Some news to report. The Baltimore Orioles we signed shortstop J.J. Hardy to a three-year contract extension worth $40 million. And more trouble for Vikings running back Adrian Peterson. He admitted that he used drugs and could be arrested for drug use and stuff. And if this is ha happens, he, his career is over. His career is over. So much allegations with the beating his child and using funds for his um, organization he ran for a sex party. He's he's done in the NFL, in my opinion. No team's going to want to touch him. And that's about it, except one more thing. It's my birthday today. Happy birthday to me. I'm 38 years old. And thanks to all of you Facebook friends have wished me a happy birthday. Thanks again. I wish I could congrat um, thank you in person. But, you know, that would be impossible. But thanks again, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. And now, the subject at hand I'm going to talk about is the NBA's lock lockout potential in 2017. The NBA's... The NBA and the NBA Players Association signed a new ten, signed a ten-year um, collective bargaining agreement in 2011 to end a 2011 lockout that which lasted four months of the season and cost 16 games of the 2011-2012 season. It was a lot of concessions the players made to get back to playing basketball, but there was a stipulation in the CBA it could be reopened after six years, which would take it to the 2016-2017 season. And my and you're already hearing rumblings that from a lot of players that they that they might want to cancel the CBA after the 2016-2017 season because of so many of the NBA teams getting sold for upwards of between $750 million to over $2 billion. And, the, and also the new nine-year television contract extension that the NBA just signed with ABC and ESPN and Turner Sports and so many of the players who in the Players Association who gave up a lot of concessions during the last lockout say, whoa, Wait a minute. If the owners are pocketing, getting a lot more money, we should get a cut in it. And there's also some owners says owners want like maximum contracts to be stopped and stuff. And a couple of players agree that maximum contracts could be stopped. I think there's the chances of the um, NBA opening up their collective buying agreement again after the 2016-2017 season is about 80 to 90 percent going to happen, folks, because the NBA, NBA Players Association wants probably a little more of the concessions back a little bit again because what they gave back, they want a little more. I think the, the players get 50 per, 51 percent of the, like the revenue from the television contracts and the and the and the merchandise and the other stuff and they want a little more they had had like 57 percent the last cba they had to go down to 51 i think the players want maybe somewhere like 53 or 54 percent and this will be the first test of adam silver's tenure as commissioner to deal with a labor situation as and the new players are the new Players Association Executive Director, Michelle Roberts, this is, will be their first test, real test, to see if they could get a deal done to avoid another, another work stoppage that cost games. But, you know, I think a, a lockout is going to ha ha have to happen, folks. There's no doubt about it. What I would like to see the NBA, NBA and NBA Players Association do is first, like, the draft limit, 20 years old 
two years of college. And also another thing that I would like the NBA and the NBA Players Association to do, ha, ha, we revised that personal conduct code because of all the things that's happening with the NFL with like domestic disputes and being up alleged child abuse and other stuff. Make a policy if they violate a code of con if a, any 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 NBA player violates like gets arrested for domestic dispute or child abuse or any other serious crime, they get suspended immediately, indefinitely, pending an investigation. Pending an investigation from the NBA themselves. And also I would also the NBA and the NBA Players Association should really agree to make the NBA developmental league a true minor league system for basketball and maybe they'd have to expand the rosters to maybe 12 active players playing in a in the game and have like up to like six players on each team's like taxi squad and stuff like that and with these maximum contracts I think the NBA and the NBA Players Association should agree that they should not have any max have limit max contracts to two players per team and also with like guaranteed contracts I think most of them should be guaranteed with one exception if they get released or cut the team does not have to pay the remainder of the contract they're guaranteed as long as they're on the team if they're not the team the team doesn't have to own anything and that's what my take is on it. I think the, in my opinion, I hope they could settle. Hopefully the collective bargaining agreement doesn't have to be opt out or reopened after the 2016 to 2017 season. But it looks like it's a, it's, it's a 80 to 90 percent chance it's going to happen, folks. Well, that's about it on that. My next subject will be about my personality profile about Former professional wrestler Magnum TA. That's going to be tonight, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. See you tonight.